Good evening, kids, and welcome to the second installment of the Fedora Hippies. Hi. We have quite a show for you this fine evening. Ah, Kids, did you know that depression is just all in your head? That you can will yourself to be well again if you just magically think it? Yeah. Really, it is. Why, just ask expert, Nicole Arbor. I mean, never mind that she appears to have <laughs> her only credentials are being a stand-up comic, and from what I've seen, a pretty poor one at that. A cheerleader, a writer, I shudder to think because I'm surprised the woman can write, but hey, I can be surprised too. Because, kids, she knows where it's at. Just ask her. Here I was thinking it was actually a disease, a chronic illness, a medical issue. And those days I could barely muster the energy to get out of bed to go from my room to another room in my three and a half room apartment are only simply because I just don't will myself. But hey, thanks, Nikki. I have been set straight. I have seen the light. Yep, I have seen the light. I had stumbled onto her channel for the first time a month or so ago, figuring she's a fellow Canuck and, well, sort of fam famous or more like infamous, however you want to put it. But all attention is good and attention, right, Nikki? The first video I ever saw of hers was, unfortunately, Dear Fat People. Uh, not ideal for someone who is overweight, such as myself, but anyways. Anyways, that particular video is basically a bubble-headed, excruciatingly over six-minute long blonde moment. Yesterday, I stumbled onto her Depression is All in Your Head video. Another extended blonde moment. I'm starting to see a pattern here. All her videos are just extended blonde moments. I'm kind of waiting for her to get a nosebleed or something uh, from all that thinking, you know, the veins popping and all that. Anyways, ordinarily, these types of videos are best ignored, except, as I mentioned, she apparently is somewhat well-known, and her channel does have over 400,000 subscribers. The video also got over a million views, so somebody is watching it. Yeah, they... Disorders control us much of the time. It's largely why we need to have medications such as SSRIs to function in daily life. Which brings me to my next point. Miss Nikki starts in with the pill shaming. Now, unfortunately, she ain't alone. I have observed lately that pill shaming is indeed a thing nowadays. She claims that antidepressants rob you of your feelings. To paraphrase her, you feel like a zombie. And where you see a bunch of footage with a bunch of zombies from B-movies uh, wandering across her screen. I will give her maybe half a point here, and I'm feeling charitable tonight. Many of these medications have that effect to some people, including yours truly. I remember when I was on Prozac, I was so out of it and my judgment was so off, I ended up crossing a Montreal intersection into oncoming traffic. The fact that I survived that unscathed is a miracle. That was the last straw for me after a long bout of horrific side effects on Prozac. I took myself off of it. That said, if Prozac helps you and you don't have many of the side effects I endured, you should stick to it. And if there are any concerns, discuss it with your doctor or your healthcare professional. I was also on Celexa almost 10 years ago, among other things. And yes, as Nikki Deer would put it, the prescription left me numb, devoid of feelings. Other anti-anxiety and antidepressants had that same effect on me. It's why I coined the term lobotomy in a bottle. However, I was going through a time where I was always crying, shaking, and feeling weighed down physically as well as mentally. I was working at a job I enjoyed very much. For the first time, I had a job where I really felt 
I was doing something more altruistic than simply being a cog helping to line some company's president or CEO's pockets. I was working the front desk where people saw me and talked to me daily, could not afford to cry or to be unwell. I would have lost my job or at the very least had disciplinary action against me. And of course, I don't need to say that would have made matters a hell of a lot worse. Nikki, dear, don't you think it was best for me that I not have any emotions or feelings in order to be able to function at my job I really wanted to hold on to? I mean, you're such a damned expert. Just tell me, dear. What was I supposed to do under the circumstances? I'm sure I'm not alone here. One thing about depression and anxiety, it often makes holding down full-time jobs problematic. In my case, having trouble controlling my emotions was just a drop in the bucket as to why. Medications have failed me miserably. They would work for a short while until they didn't. I am also prone to many side effects of these types of medications, but that is just me. For some, these medications are a godsend, and they can and do help many afflicted with mental Ill illness and lead productive lives. For Nikki to plant such a seed of doubt in such an individual is disingenuous and even dangerous. They may decide to take themselves off because some pseudo-celebrity says so, only to end up with negative effects, in some cases the results can be catastrophic. Also, since I am not working anymore, I don't really have to worry most of the time about keeping my emotions in check. But again, that is just me and that is my situation. Everybody is different. Again, others suffering from mental illness and being treated with medication should do what is right for them and not do something because... The intertubes say so. Once again, kids, discuss it with a healthcare professional. She then goes on to point out some statistic that depression is only 10% outside factors like genetics, chemical imbalance, traumatic events, environment, and that 90% is all within us. It's all in our heads. Oh, now let's see the graphic on the screen. There's the graphic on the screen she shows, proving her point. See how impressive and sciency her pie chart is? Wow, I'm impressed. I mean, I could draw that too and put it up on my videos or my social media pages and claim it's the gospel truth from Harvard University or McGill University or anywhere and try to make you believe it because I say so. As you can see, there is no source indicated. However, before presenting it, she claimed it was from Harvard University. But again, this graphic says nothing of the kind. It doesn't tell us anything at all where it's from. Since Miss Nikki is such a fan of Harvard University, let's take a look at what the good folks at Harvard Medical School have to say on the subject of depression. Shall we? As you can see, the original article here was published in June 2009, but was updated uh, fairly recently in April 11th of 2017. It says, it's often said that depression results from a chemical imbalance, but that figure of speech doesn't capture how complex the disease is. Research suggests that depression doesn't spring from simply having too much or too little of certain brain chemicals. Rather, there are many possible causes of depression, including faulty mood regulation by the brain, genetic vulnerability, stressful life events, medications, and medical problems. It's believed that several of these forces interact to bring on depression. To be sure, chemicals are involved in this process, but it is not a simple matter of one chemical being too low and another too high. Rather, many chemicals are involved working both inside and outside nerve cells. There are millions, even billions of chemical reactions that make up the dynamic system that is responsible for your mood, perceptions, and how you experience life. With this level of complexity, you can see how two people might have similar symptoms of depression, but the problem on the inside, and therefore what treatments will work best, may be entirely different. 
Researchers have learned much about the biology of depression. They've identified genes that make individuals more vulnerable to low moods and influence how an individual responds to drug therapy. One day, these discoveries should lead to better, more individualized treatment. Uh, in brackets, see from the lab to your medicine cabinet. But as that is likely to be years away. And while researchers know more now than ever before about the, how the brain regulates mood, their understanding of the biology of depression is far from complete. What follows an overview of the current understanding of the major factors believed to play a role in depression. Um, I will leave a link to the full article in the description box below. Oh, and Nikki has four steps to follow in order to beat depression. She has this, don't you know? And no, none of them involve traditional methods, which of course include therapy with a qualified professional and or meds, um, among other things. And she has, yes, so let's try to touch upon those four steps, shall we? Number one, number one, she suggests that we simply eliminate things that are making us depressed, such as being stuck at a job we may not like or, in, or to end a bad relationship or stop hanging around with friends we don't like. Oh, key. why didn't I think of that? Does she honestly think a lot of us do not uh, every so often make that inventory of ourselves? You know, getting rid of things or others that may make us feel worse doesn't always help because as mentioned, it is an affliction. It is a chronic illness and must be treated as such. And then she asks, what haven't we processed? And we must start processing things. Yes. So she does a crumb. She does all this while she's doing this weird crumbling motion with her hands just like this. Do you see? Take that, dear. Stop trying to be like other people, she says. Uh, Nicole, dear, why don't you practice what you preach? Stop trying to fit in. Easy to say when one is not in that situation. Basically, she says, if we start listening to, her, to ourselves, all will be well again. Well, got a news flash. Sometimes listening to those voices within ourselves only further exacerbates our condition, particularly during a uh, crisis mode. In the case of anxiety, too many ideas are running around our minds at once at such a fast pace that we can't always keep up. Uh, that leads to even further anxiety and depression and in many instances lead to panic attacks where we hyperventilate, our blood pressure spikes, and we just can't move. See how this works? I believe that's what they call a vicious circle. See? Number two, exercise, she says. Take dancing lessons. Just get out and move. Oh, God, is she auditioning for the next night commercial? Yeah. I'll concede that exercise can and does help some people with depression and anxiety, as well as everybody else. Um both emotionally and physically. Um, anything, I'm all for anything, anything that helps someone feel better. In fact, I would encourage it. However, it is not a cure-all and it simply does not work for all. As mentioned, depression and anxiety are often crippling diseases, physically as well as mentally. How is someone so bogged down they cannot get out of bed or they are hyperventilating from a panic attack Supposed to just get up and go, go, go. If it were that simple, we'd all be doing it. And we would all be happy and healthy and live happily ever after. Sorry, it just don't work that way. In fact, some years ago when I was on leave from work due to one of many burnouts, I did join a gym as I had the time, hoping I would find some energy and more importantly, lose weight. After six months of killing myself, doing two hours of cardio per day, six days a week at the gym, and yes, under the supervision of a personal trainer to boot, 
I saw that I didn't lose an ounce. Yeah, even the, even the trainer was puzzled at that one. Yeah. Well, the fact that I didn't lose weight after all that hard work, it, to me, it was hard work for nothing. Uh, it's not like I enjoy working out. I don't like the gym. I don't like gym culture. So imagine all my efforts were in vain. So that, yeah, sent me down in a downward spiral once again. Um, as for going out, just going out. Well, again, speaking for myself, and I'm sure many others, um, that may not work for everybody all of the time. I know that more often than not, as I get older, when I am out, particularly in crowds where there is too much happening and confusion, I sometimes get stimulus overdrive, which leads me to more frightening uh, situations like working hard to act like everything is all right because I don't want anyone to know. Uh, sometimes I am out of breath or I can't, or I'm looking around and I can't uh, get a focus point. And for a moment, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. In these situations, believe me, I often long for the safety and comfort of my own home. Um, I am also very awkward in social situations. I don't really function well in groups. And this is a common issue with those who suffer from mental illness. That's not to say that we should never attempt uh, to be sociable. Um, it just means it's harder for some, like myself. And sometimes it is not helpful. And sometimes we should not be forced into something that we're either not comfortable with or not ready to handle. Um, it's, it, so it, in other words, for me, it's like the harder I work at pretending all is normal and fine and dandy, uh, the more anxious I feel. Again, it's a vicious circle for those, for some who are afflicted with depression or anxiety or another disorder, socializing can be the best medicine. As I mentioned, my friend, Natasha, who may be joining in on future videos is a prime example of this. Just an example of how no two people react the same way to the same situation. She says we, would, uh, we should compliment people often. Supposedly, complimenting it, complimenting somebody will make us all feel warm and fuzzy inside. Okay, Nikki, I'm going to try it. Let's put this to the test, shall we? Nikki, dear, I love what you did with your hair. Hmm, nope, don't feel better. In fact, I just lied, and that never makes me feel great. Cheer for everyone, she says. Yay, send them a Facebook message. Just do something to make everybody else happy will make us magically feel better. Kazam. Well, she would say that being a former cheerleader and all. Oh, God, you could take the girl out of cheerleading, but can't take cheerleading out of the girl. We have trouble cheering for ourselves. How the hell are we supposed to cheer for someone else if we just don't have it in us? Especially when we are in that dark place. Yes, I do feel good when I do something nice for someone, but it is not always possible. By nature, I am a very nurturing person, a very empathetic one who uh, always tries to help her fellow man whenever she can. But that is not always possible, like I said. Um, I am just not up to it physically or mentally. Um, in, you know... And this would go for anybody, I'd like to think. But again, it does not correct our conditions necessarily. And it's certainly no cure-all. And kids, I don't know about you, but frankly, some Facebook messages, I can really do without. And <laughs> it would do, in fact, it would do wonders for my own mental health if I just didn't receive them. See how this works. She also talks of the complain-a-thon. Everybody has complaints, some more pressing than others. So pressing that trying to bury it often makes the situation worse and would lead someone mentally ill or not to very dark places. 
Some, I agree, we can take with a grain of salt. But not all. And she calls us looking at the news, which is often disturbing and dark. She calls it crack. We are addicted to bad news. So in short, she's promoting ignorance is bliss, it would appear. Well, that is not the case more often than not. Ignorance can sometimes get us into more trouble than we are already in. Uh, for example, I used to run a blog providing political commentary. That often meant looking at every news story of the day or uh, having debates and discussions with people I may not want to talk to, um, no matter how awful it all may be. While often our political situation or current event may be a trigger, um, for me, it did not lead to uh, the worst situations as others have. In fact, when I would publish a well-researched blog post with a different angle than most of the commentators out there, that was my high, me at my finest. Again, not for everybody, but you get the idea. She then goes on to suggest we stop talking trash of other people. All would be well. Uh, Nikki, dear... Ain't you doing just that, talking trash of those suffering from depression? Number four, goes back to the beginning of our video. Make the decision to be happy. Happy, happy. Cure our own depression. Oh, yeah, golly gee. Why didn't I think of that? Thanks to Nikki, we should see a bunch of psychologists, psychiatrists, etc. On the pogey line in three. Two, one. Again, I am not sure if she did this video in an attempt to be funny or if she was serious, but either way, it was very disingenuous and, as mentioned, can be dangerous for someone who is more vulnerable reading this could make uh, or watching her video. Uh, it could make someone feel even worse because they can't live up to her high standard. As for you, Nikki, dear... You're about as funny as a colonoscopy administered by a pipe fitter. On a serious note, if you are suffering from mental health issues of any kind and are already receiving help that is working out for you, whatever that may be, just stick with it. There is no shame in asking for help, whether it is from healthcare professionals or from family and friends. Once again, mental health help should not be a one size fits all approach. Because, after all, everybody is different and everybody handles their own illness differently. And yes, uh, for the healthcare professionals, they could do better in treating the patient and not the disease itself. I will try to link her video in the description box for those who may want to watch and uh, maybe have a better idea of what I am ranting about today. Sorry for some of the sloppy editing, but I am also new at producing and editing videos. Getting better. If you like the content, please subscribe and hit the little bell if you want to receive notifications whenever we upload a video. Any comments and questions? Email us at the email address indicated in the description box. Phew! I feel much better now. Good night, everybody! Yes, I am doing the fashion faux pas. I'm wearing socks and sandals.